60 Minutes Overtime. Ashley, you produced an important story for 60 Minutes this week about the weapon of choice for most mass shooters, the AR-15 semi-automatic rifle. A central element in your story is the ballistics demonstrations. Yes. Yeah. So this is a pretty accurate representation of what would happen to a human being. Yeah, this is currently considered the kind of the state of the art. And we see this amazing slow motion footage comparing rounds from a nine millimeter handgun mm -hmm. and an AR-15. Mm. See the difference? Yes. <laughs> did 60 Minutes cameras shoot that footage? Yes, we did. I see, you can see it in there, I think. Why compare specifically these two rounds, the nine millimeter versus the AR-15? Because the, the nine millimeter um, handgun is an incredibly popular weapon and is found in, you know, across America in great numbers and, and it's, it's really the gun that uh, kills more people than the AR-15. So it's something that emergency rooms have been seeing for years, that doctors have been looking at and dealing with for years. And they understand how that bullet operates. Conversely, the AR-15 is something most emergency rooms haven't faced yet. And it is a whole different kind of injury. When you're hit with an AR-15 bullet, most people die fairly quickly from bleeding out. So this is really a shift in what uh, ERs across the country have to, have to start thinking about, right? It is absolutely a shift. So when you see that uh, bullet hit that gel, and you have this gaping hole, and that is what the surgeons and the doctors and the first responders are facing when they are dealing with these mass shooting victims. This is unlike anything we've seen. What we saw amongst these children is a, oftentimes a very small entry wound. And you would think that with that small entry wound, we're gonna, we're gonna save this, this child. But in retrospect, when we look back at the internal damage that was done by these, by these bullets, um, it was something that you would never imagine could happen from what you saw on the outside. You also spoke to a former Green Beret, mm -hmm. uh, Don Deo. Yeah. And he has actually faced mass casualties on the battlefield. And he showed you a demonstration on a cut of pork. And it's, it's bone in, so it's very similar to what like the thigh of, you know, an actual average size human would be. He really wants to show people what this would look like in flesh. And after he had shot rounds into it, a nine millimeter bullet and an AR-15 bullet. And at first glance, they look very similar. These two, these are rifle rounds. And then over here, we have two nine millimeter entry wounds. Just and what was incredible is the entry wounds are so small, you flip the piece of pork around and you see the actual wound that these two bullets created. The nine millimeter bullet wound, quite small, not a lot of damage there. The AR-15 bullet wound, gaping hole, shattered bone. So under our blood pressure, our pulse rate, that whole cavity with the tissue damage will fill with blood. So we learn in your story that the AR-15 style weapon is the most popular rifle in America. What kind of reaction are you expecting from enthusiasts of this gun after they see your story? We're not quite sure. And it, it was incredibly important to me um, to go at this story in a way that kept it completely apolitical we're not talking about pro-guns, we're not talking about anti-guns. It's medical. And it was through this lens that I think, I hope, will speak to everyone across America. Shooters don't ask which side of the debate you're on. Not at all. Before pulling the trigger. So regardless of your views on the AR-15, if it's your kid, if it's your loved one, you're going to want them to survive that shooting. Right. Right, and as um, one of the doctors that we interviewed in our piece said so well, that's kind of where we're at right now in America. This is where they have to prepare. What are the three things that, that, that we need for, for bleeding? Number one is? 
Okay, turn okay, so there's two of them in here. What else do we need? If it's junctional, gauze, that's in here as well. If it's in the chest, what do we need? It's all here. I think that what we have to do now, and this is, a, this is urgent, is that we have to have the general public understand that they are the first line of defense. And every city, every community in this country needs to roll out those bleeding kits or these active killer kits. We call them the stop the bleed. And every child has to learn how to do it. And j just feel how it feels to try and go one more time. Right. Okay.